Every single AI company is not telling the truth about what its context window really does. And this video talks about context windows, memory, and what that means for AGI, artificial general intelligence. First, let's dive into the claims that are being made. These are big claims. Million token context windows. There's talk of 2 million, 5 million, even 10 million token context windows coming soon. We already have context windows routinely in the several hundred thousand tokens all the time. What this means in practice is that companies are telling us that if you want to put a prompt in that is a full book, you can do that. It's not true. It doesn't actually work that way. And anyone who works with LLMs extensively will tell you that. You might get a tenth of the usual context window. Running understanding, for example, of Gemini right now with a million token context window on paper is you get really solid performance out of about 128,000 tokens or just over a tenth. And after that, it's a little bit more questionable. It's not clear. And there are absolutely developer forums complaining about the fact that Gemini does not have effective performance, especially past the half million mark. Why, you might think, would someone want to put in a context that large? No one writes a half a million token prompt. Not even I write a half a million token prompt. I will tell you why. If you are analyzing documents, if you're analyzing code bases, fundamentally anything with very large sequences of tokens that make semantic meaning across large structures together, you need the option to use a larger context window. The problem is this. Fundamentally, when the transformer reads that context, it does not read it as a structure. It reads it as a string of tokens. And so larger structures within the document, within the code base, can get lost. And that is why agentic search is picking up versus just semantic rag for context windows for code bases. And by context window, in this case, like RAG is obviously not the context window. It's like part of the context engineering that you're doing for the code base. The point is having a search function can be just semantic meaning for code bases because there's so much structure in code bases. And that is just one example of where we can go wrong when we assume that context windows just as vanilla fill the prompt and add the doc context windows work. They don't necessarily work well. And I know that model makers will push a like 99% or 98% performance on needle in the haystack tests. And a needle in the haystack test is kind of what it sounds like. You stick like one random fact in the middle of a gigantic block of text and you test to see if the model can find it. The problem is this is all done under a very controlled environment, and it does not measure the ability of an LLM to synthesize between multiple pieces of specific context, which by the way, is exactly what you need it to do to do higher level thinking. It is what humans are able to do when they read a book. Granted, we don't memorize every part of the book we read, but we don't have the problem of saying, you know what, the book I'm reading right now, I remember it less well than the book that I read four years ago. We have the opposite problem, but with LLMs, it's the, it's the other way. At the end of the day, if it's in pre-training data, I can actually get kind of decent literary analysis. If the book is something that I'm reading now in the sense that it's a new prompt or new text it hasn't seen before, I don't really give it books, but like I can give it docs so that it hasn't seen before. It's not in the pre-training data. Even with state-of-the-art models like O3 Pro, it can still be very hit or miss whether it actually examines the full context. And tests back this up. Tests are often showing an edge awareness with LLMs where they are paying attention to the end and they're paying attention to the beginning and the middle is a big U shape. So one, I'm going to tell you a few strategies for how this is handled, because I don't think that's often sort of laid out just very clearly, like these are your options. We all know this is a problem. So lay out the options, right? And then number two, I want to talk about AGI. And I want to talk about what this means for artificial general intelligence, but we'll save that fun stuff for the end. So let's just run through a few strategies quickly. We'll do five. So number one, I've talked about this one before. We're not going to belabor it. RAG, retrieval augmented generation. Fundamentally, if you feel like you need to have an index that sort of gives you a sense of semantic meaning, you need the model to go and retrieve something with a particular utterance or prompt and then go fetch something out of a very large context that you've put into the rag so it doesn't just live in the context window. Fantastic. Rag can work well. It, like the classic example is the wiki, the HR manual. 
That's kind of what RAG is good for. Second strategy, summary change. Summary chains. Real example, 200 page financial report. The old approach would be to feed all 200 pages and you're paying, I don't know, 50 bucks or something to the API, depending on how big a prompt you run, depending on how complex and multi-step it is, how many tokens you're burning depending on the model, new approach, split it into sections, summarize each of them, and then combine each of the summaries together. So you're laddering up the semantic meaning. It's X cheaper at least. Whatever your model is, it's gonna run a lot cheaper. And the accuracy is higher because by splitting it into sections, you're making sure nothing gets stuck in the middle and is just lost. I have Claude all the time admit to me that Claude does not read the documents I give it fully. It reads the first few thousand tokens and just kind of pattern matches is literally what Claude said, but I call it vibes. It just vibes its way through. Okay, third strategy to deal with this, strategic chunking. So similarly, you split the 80 page document into sections. This is similar to summary chains. And then you ask each chunk, you interrogate each chunk. Do you contain information about X topic? Let's say you're trying to explore a particular product area inside a financial report for the stock market. You want to interrogate each of the uh, 10 page chunks in a very large company report. And you want to say, does it contain information about the products? Only positive chunks would then move forward after you do that interrogation across splits. This results in vastly fewer tokens being used and much better accuracy, even versus like a vector search, because you're basically saying you must pay attention. This is a small context window. Just look at it. It's not rag. All I'm asking you to do is just look at the context window and tell me if this is in here. And I'm giving you so little, just a few thousand tokens, like you can't mess it up. Fourth strategy is context budgeting, which is a big part of context engineering. You sort of treat the tokens the way we treated random access memory or RAM in the nice. You, you conserve it, you treat it like it's precious. So you would say, for example, here, you know, th this 500, like we're always gonna have system instructions. We're just gonna have 500 lines of system instructions or 50 lines of system instructions, and that's that's what we're gonna have. Okay, and this, this next piece, this is, I'll call it a thousand tokens, we'll say for conversation history. And that's summarizing older parts of the conversation. Again, we're not gonna touch it. 2000 tokens for retrieved documents, and then 500 for working memory, whatever it is. You can do more of this in the API where you're sort of hacking the context. If you are in a chat bot, you have limited options. The system instructions you can't touch. The conversation history is summarized for you. Retrieve documents, it's kind of up to you. You'll notice if you're in the chat bot that older retrieved documents are dropped out. I routinely have a conversation with O3 where I'm like, remember that document? And it's literally there. And I remember uploading it. And there's a little marker in the UI that shows I did it. And of course, O3 is like, it's out of memory. I don't know. Didn't happen. I can't remember it. And so if you're in the chat bot, you have to do all of this manually. You have to kind of track how long your conversation is going for, what you're asking for, and then budget your asks and budget the documents you give very carefully. So the last strategy is position hacking. So research shows attention is at least 3x greater at the edges of the prompt. So, and I've talked about this before, put critical instructions at the beginning, put like key facts at the end. The relevant document is where it needs to be to be paid attention to, like first, or the second most is last. And then insert checkpoints every few thousand tokens as you chat to make sure that you confirm that the prompt is working. And so in a sense, in that you're not trying to escape the fact that you have limited context, you're actually trying to position hack. Now, if I were to look at this and say, now what can you do with APIs versus a chat window? All five of these are very viable with an API first approach. Only some of these work with a chat window. So the chat window, you can do summary chains. That would work because you can actually like split into sections and have different chats. You can do strategic chunking where you ask it if it contains information, that works. You can do position hacking where you time your instructions and kind of what you put where. It is a little bit more difficult if you're in the chat window to do context budgeting and to do retrieval augmented generation, although arguably a custom GPT is effectively a cheap form of retrieval augmented generation or a project area in chat GPT is a cheap form of retrieval augmented generation. So there's ways to kind of get there, but certainly uh, summary chain, strategic chunking and position hacking are very viable, even if you're not an API person. Okay, let's get slightly philosophical here for a minute toward the end of this video. I wanna get real honest about the fact that we've been talking for a few minutes about the fact that fundamentally, these models cannot reliably track information across a single structured piece of text that's book length. How do we expect them to maintain understanding across a lifetime of experience? 
particularly when they're not getting better at this. This is not a new issue. I am not telling you about something that did not exist when ChatGPT launched and now it does. I'm telling you about something that hasn't gotten solved. This is a limitation of our architectures that is partly a function of physics. One of the things that Google engineers have observed is that it is incredibly computationally intensive to use the full 1 million token context window. I don't know if you know this, but context scales quadratically. In other words, as you burn more tokens, if you, if you send more tokens through, it's a quadratic equation that scales to the power of four in order to process those tokens. And so if you go from 50 to 100,000, you forexed the amount of energy you have to use to process that context window, which is why some of these longer prompts take so long. Like you're burning multiple minutes staring at Opus 4 and it's just going. You're burning multiple minutes staring at O3 Pro. Some of that is that they're inference models and they're thinking, but some of it may be you gave it a lot of context. This is a fundamental limitation is not an artifact of your prompt design, although your prompt design can help address the issue. This is a robust effect across every model architecture that's been tested so far. And here's the thing. The entire bet on LLMs achieving artificial general intelligence rests on this assumption, if you really reduce it. Humans are lossy com compression functions too. I'll say it again. Humans are lossy compression functions too. Our forgetting and compression is fundamentally similar to what these models do. That is the bet. I don't know that I agree with it. The context window problem suggests this bet might be incorrect. Yes, we forget details, but we maintain coherent mental models. Sure, I can't recite page 50 of the legal document verbatim, but I understand how chapter 20 relates to chapter one, and I can tell you pretty clearly. LLM, that's not the same, right? Research shows they're doing pattern matching, and if they're doing pattern matching, that's not the same as understanding the structure. And if this concept of quadratic complexity really applies, it's, it's not just inconvenient. At AGI scales, you're hitting thermodynamic limits. You're hitting energy limits. We need perhaps a fundamentally different breakthrough in the way that we handle attention across long context windows in order to truly get to a point where these LLMs can deeply understand context across very large spaces. So either we're right and intelligence really is lossy compression. Maybe I'm just fooling myself. I'm a very lossy human and I just need to be honest, right? And maybe you need to be honest and we need to be a little more humble and recognize that the limitations of the AI are our limitations too. And it's going to get to AGI effectively because humans are not that much better or we're kind of wrong and we're building very sophisticated stochastic parrots, people spirits, pick your description of choice. And those machines will never really understand the large context windows that we throw at them. And that is a fundamental computational limit that we would have to have a new breakthrough to get to sort of AGI from. For now, I would settle for honesty from vendors who are talking about context windows. I think we have traded this is a million context windows and it's simple for the honesty that we need to actually do appropriate planning. I, I would like to propose that we start to use real tests of actual synthesis work across documents as a way to describe capabilities. Like this model can effectively synthesize insights across a 10 page document, gets it right. 90% of the time, or this one can do it for a 20 page or a hundred page, whatever it is. I have yet to see, by the way, a reliable synthesis across a hundred page document by any model, if it's a complex document. So that's a theoretical. Okay. So I've left you with a few strategies. We've talked about how you address this. Don't walk away thinking that just because I'm skeptical about the implications for AGI, I don't think that this is a transformative opportunity for us building. If we apply any of these five strategies or maybe a combination of them, it is totally possible to use the LLMs we have today to accomplish transformative business results. I've seen it. Now that doesn't mean a lot of people aren't screwing it up. They are. But the AI we have today, even if it never gets better, is still good enough that with the weaknesses in the context windows we have today, we can still build business solutions and frankly, personal solutions that offer a ton of value. I know people who are within the context windows we have today, building really effective second brains. It's it's just possible. Some of them are hacking Obsidian. Some are using other tools. Some of them are rolling their own. There are remarkable things that we're able to do personally and professionally within the context window limitations we have today. Use the five strategies I laid out, the position hacking, the context budgeting, the strategic chunking, the summary chains, the RAG, retrieval log, meta generation, and have fun with what we've got. 
and be aware of the claims that model makers and vendors make about context windows. They're not all they're cracked up to be. Cheers.